Hey guys, what is up? Today's video, we're gonna be talking about nine bolt rear ends for the third gen Camaro. On my third gen, I got rear drum brakes. And so I was looking around for what are the factory disc brakes. And I happen to be, I happen to have acquired both types. All right, so on my hunt for getting a factory rear disc option, um, I came across both types. I believe it's both types. I think there's a 1LE, uh, but let me run you over the main two types. This is the not as good uh, rear end. This is the much better rear end. The differences are these calipers are the PBR aluminum. And you can see like, these are Australian rear ends. I said, see the, in between the fins, it says made in Australia. These are Australian made Borg Warner um, nine bolt. Um, and you can just tell by counting the bolts on the back of here, how many bolts it has. And luckily on this one, I have the actual tag, so I know it's a 277. And then you might have your posi tag over here, which is like, tells you like use uh, slip f differential fluid or whatever. That, that's the second tag that comes on some of them. This rear end is, is really cool because it's complete with everything, but this thing is corroded all to heck. The other nine bolt with the regular discs is not as corroded. Um, but let's walk you through the differences and how you can tell. Um, first way to tell, I guess, obviously, is if you just look at the calipers. See um, the calipers on that side and on that side. So they're both facing uh, to the rear, I guess, because that's the rear. Um, on the standard disc brake, they are facing opposite. So one's on that side. That one will be facing the front of the car. This one is facing the rear of the car. Sorry, I don't have this caliper attached, but that's where it would attach right there. So they're attached on opposite sides. So from 82 to 92, you had different disc uh, rear end options. 89 was the actual best year apparently because 89, you were able to get this performance package. This 89 came out of an IROC Z. And so you get these finned aluminum PBR calipers and you get much bigger rotors. If you can tell, the size difference there between the two rotors, that's the standard, it's about 10 inch, this is about 11.6 inches. Um, the rotors are easily findable. I just got a set from O'Reilly's just to throw on there. They are the part number for them, if you wanna look that up. I found them by looking up an 89 uh, Camaro IROC Z rear disc rotors. These rotors are also a lot thinner than these rotors. These rotors are pretty thick compared to these rotors. I don't know why that is. I mean, who knows? I believe the calipers are both single piston calipers on each. Um, so I don't know why this stops better than that, but apparently this is way more effective at actual stopping than that one. Now, what do you do if you have that one and you want this? It's actually pretty easy. If you have this standard rear disc from like 82 to 88, um, the non PBR aluminum one, all you have to do is, uh, there's a guy uh, flying by, F-L-Y-N-B-Y-E.com, flying by. He sells this right here. So this bracket right here is all you need to make this work here. Because you just take your rotors, you would get these rotors from O'Reilly's, pick up a set of these, then you'd get these probably from eBay. Two rotors were like 120 bucks. So 120 bucks for two rotors, and then I bet you probably spend another 150 on calipers and you should be good to go. Then brake pads are probably 20 bucks. The actual kit from Flying By, that is, it's a, re, it's a mock up of this plate right here. Um, I think it's $110 on his site. I'll link it down below. As you can see, the four bolts that hold in the axle and all this stuff together, that's the receiving end on the ass end side of it. But there's four bolts, if you can see in there. You take out the four bolts on the front here and all this slides off. And then the same thing, the same four bolts are on that, the end of that axle tube right there. So you just slip all that off, throw these on, and then you can just put these on. You might have to get these bolts right here. There's two bolts that hold them on underneath. This bolt and that bolt. Um, but other than that, you should be good to go if you wanted to upgrade that to that. That's what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to put those backing plates on that rear end because they're both nine bolt Borg Warner 277s, but that one doesn't have all the nasty corrosion this one has, but this one has the cool brakes. Um, so I might Frankenstein, Frankenstein them together and do all that. Also, these are all posi units. So if I, for instance, a way to test to see if your posi is working, just take and I'm going to, I'm going to spin this. You should see that spinning too. See that? 
all of it spinning because the posi is working. So yeah, forgive me for my lack of knowledge. I don't know a ton about these, but from what I've learned, there wasn't anything I could find on YouTube that would tell me like how to differentiate. And I'm just a total noob when it came to differentials. Luckily, there's guys in the forums that were helping me and I uh, was able to figure it out. So to sum it up, um, 82 to 88 and then 89 and up. I'm not sure about the 90, 91, 92s because my camera was on 82 and it has drums, um, but it didn't have the uh, disc option. So um, I'm not sure what discs came in the 92, but I don't think they made the nine bolts after 1989. 89 was the last year for the nine bolt and this. And apparently that's the most desirable year, I don't know, because apparently the nine bolt is a little bit stronger than the 10 bolt. And again, don't roast me in the comments. I'm just, that's what I hear. I'm just daily driving mine and cruising it around. I don't care that much about, I don't drag, I don't drag race the car. I don't autocross the car. It's just a daily driver that I just drive around like on the weekends and stuff, or I guess I wouldn't make it a daily driver, but you know, just cruising it around. So I could care less. My 10 bolt has been fine. Um, so I don't need to upgrade to anything stronger. I just wanted factory disc brakes. And these are your two options um, as far as that. You can get to the fourth gen, um, rear axles, but your, your axle is going to sit out like an inch and a half on each side, um, which I don't like the look of. But the parts are also, but apparently the parts are also super easy to find for those, uh, the LT1 uh, rear ends or whatever. But also the parts for this are easy to find, at least the rotors were. I assume the calipers would be decently easy to find as well. So if you have a rear disc or you find one of these rear discs like this for cheap, um, you can just spend 110 bucks, get these back in plates from flyingby.com. I'll link them down below. I'm not sponsored or anything. I've never bought anything from the guy, but uh, he, he sells them. Uh, I know he sells out and he'll like stop shipping for like a month and you gotta wait till he's back in stock or whatever, but you can get them, get that bolted on, calipers, rotors, put those on and you got this rear end. So um, 277 gears, the most common, that's what both of these are. Um, again, I don't care about drag racing or whatever, launching the car. Uh, so 277 is fine for me. I probably hit like 1200 RPM on the highway at 65 miles an hour. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, these are my two um, disc rear ends that I found on the quest to swap to a disc rear end factory on my 1992 Camaro RS. Any questions you have, leave them down below. Um, also, if you have any questions, you should just hop in the, the thirdgen.org or third gen forums. Uh, there's a lot of helpful people on there. So have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.